Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan Clark, editor with the Modesto Bee, and welcome to tonight's 2020 general election forum featuring the candidates for the Modesto City Council District 3 seat. They are uh, Jim Applegate, Janice Keating, and Chris Rickey. They are vying to replace Christy IU in the district that covers Central and West Modesto. Moderating tonight's panel will be the opinions editor, Garth Stapley, and he'll be joined by the Bee's editorial award, myself, and Maria Figueroa, the Bee's information and research specialist. Garth, take it away. All right, candidates, we're so pleased to have you with us. Thank you for uh, joining us on this Zoom call. We wish we could do it in person, but uh, we don't always get what we want. We will start uh, tonight's uh, uh, discussion with opening statements. You'll get one minute each, and uh, let's uh, go in alphabetic order. That means that, uh, Jim, you're up first. Okay, great. Well, I just want to say thank you for this great opportunity to speak uh, to Modesto, really, through the Modesto Bee. And so thank you, and thanks to my two um, op opponents for being willing to engage in this as well. So I've lived in Modesto for 38 years, actually um, moved here in junior high and then went to Downey here. I went on to Stan State to get a bachelor's in organizational communications, went on to get my doctorate in organizational leadership. I've been married for 28 years. I raised five kids in this town. I've loved being a part of that. And now I have two son-in-laws and my first grandson. So it's been great to be in Modesto. Um, I've been in business here for about 20 years at a construction firm dealing with large complex projects. In 2007, we started a church and I'm really proud of our church because we're in the city for the city and the people there, I'm proud of the way they engage. Um, in 2013, we had the unfortunate event of going through a bankruptcy in, uh, through the business and it was right after that 2008 recession. Um, but I'm, I've been really glad that that's made me uh, much more empathetic to what's happening in Modesto during this season. Thank you, Jim. Janice. Well, thank you for the opportunity and for providing the forum for all of us to introduce ourselves to the voters. I am Janice Keating. I am the wife of Tim Keating of 32 years. I am the mother to Colin and Megan, my two adult children. I am recently now the mother of our youngest, which is Dennis, who was found on my husband's lawn at his office in May and now lives with us. He's a cat. I am, I am a self-employed bookkeeper and tax preparer. Um, I have been involved in Modesto politics for well over 20 years. I am well immersed in my community, both politically and in um, philanthropic ways. I look forward to returning to the Modesto City Council after having served two terms to add some strength to chaos. Thank you very much, Janice. Chris, your turn. All right, uh, thanks guys for having me so much. It's kind of cool to be running against two people that I kind of know, it's, so it's pretty neat. So it's nice to be here with y'all tonight. Um, really, if I'm running for city council because I got really three things that I want to try to achieve. I want to try to uh, improve affordable housing, uh, in our district, we already have a lot of mother-in-law quarters. We've got, we, and we need to encourage more of it. We need that tiny house ADU thing to expand and we need to create incentives to do that. We also need to re-zone uh, commercial into more residential areas in uh, McHenry and uh, in the mall areas um, because we're gonna have a lot of retail that's gonna really suffer with COVID. Lots of places are gonna be closed. Lots of places are gonna be um, abandoned after, after COVID's over. Um, also want to do some economic development post-COVID and finally try to increase civic pride and culture and diversity in our, in our community. So thanks again so much for having me, guys. Okay, so I have the first question. We'll start with Janice. Janice, can you explain with specifics why voters should choose you over your opponents? One minute each. I would have to sum it up in one word. Experience. And then I'll expand it to two more, knowledge, skill, and effectiveness. I did it 12 years ago, 
and I'll do it again. However, just because I served in the past does not mean I don't recognize that we are now in a different place and the landscape is quite different. So I'm capable of being able to have been involved the entire time, whether I was on the council or not. And I can look into the future and see what's happening today. I'm energetic. I am a born problem solver. And I will be extremely effective and I will get into gear the minute I hit the road because whether anyone wants to admit it or not, what elected officials have to deal with is bureaucracy. And anyone who doesn't know how to get around it, go through it and accomplish anything will soon learn. Okay. Uh, Chris Ricky, same question with specifics. Explain to voters why they should choose you over your opponents. Sure. Um, well, I've been doing business in this town for over 20 years. Um, and the kind of business that I've done, you know, mainly event production, has involved a lot of coordination with city and government officials um, and, and bureaucracy. And so I know how the system works. And I'm looking forward to trying to make that um, system do things it's never done before. Um, I've created 100 ideas for Modesto. And I'm really excited to try to execute as many of those 100 ideas um, as I can. Um, you know, like when we talk about, we talk about increasing diversity and, and celebrating our culture. I mean, we've got neighborhoods in this city that have been disparaged and put down for years and years. Like you look at uh, Crow's Landing area, you know, I call it like Mexahito, man, because I tell you what, it is an absolutely amazing um, neighborhood. It, you go to like a, you go to a, a grocery store there and there's like 500 pounds of meat in the locker and there's six guys working behind the uh behind the desk so compare that to a grocery store in another part of town it's just not the same so thanks okay uh jim the uh, next question is for you same question with specifics explain why voters should choose you over your opponents yeah so i'm a compassionate conservative um i don't have to i, I can take the best from both sides eat the meat, spit out the bones. And so I love the fact that I'm pretty much a free agent to be able to do that. And, you know, my, my whole goal in Modesto is really to unleash the potential of our great city. And I felt like I've spent the last five, 10, 20 years really building great relationships around our city. I've been working on the focus on prevention stewardship council, which means I'm engaging with all sectors from arts, entertainment, business, finance, philanthropy, I'm um, just a whole host of people. And what I think I can do is bring to the table relationships and networks because government can't fix all of these problems on their own. I think they've willingly admitted that. Um, they don't have the money, the capacity to do that. But for us as a city to engage is what it is all about. And, you know, I think the last thing is I'm, I'm really a great learner. Um, I'm willing to admit what I don't know, and I, and I love to grow and learn, and I love to ask great questions. So I th think I can bring that to the table. Thank you very much. All right, District 3, which you seek to represent, is a very diverse district. You have some really expensive homes where people are uh, engaged and, um, and very active in the community. You have other uh, areas that are sort of run down with less community involvement. How do you envision serving both constituencies? We'll start with Chris. Well, I think that uh, we all have the same real needs. I mean, when you look at like the overall city problems, like when you look at affordable housing, that affects everybody. Um, so what we need to do is we need to address the overall problems that are going to affect the whole city. So that's like making sure that we have places that people can live that are affordable, that they're not going to have to pay, you know, $800 or a thousand dollars just for a, um, just for a studio apartment. Um, we have people that are basically living in closets in the city because they can't afford the rent. And those are things we change by creating good solid policies and creating incentives. Modesto has some great incentive programs right now. Like they have this turf program. I just participated in it. You can get $3,000 to redo your front lawn with a no water, uh, no water system. 
we need to create incentive programs like the turf program to help people create affordable housing in our district. Okay, Jim, same question. Do you need me to repeat it or you got it? I'm um, sure if you want to repeat it, that's great. We just want to know how you're going to represent a, 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 a district that is so diverse. Yeah, that's a great question. And I live in the college area. I live directly across from Grace Seda. If you look out my front door, you can see Mancini Bowl. And so I, you know, I live in a really nice neighborhood, but I also have homeless right across the street from me. Uh, I work downtown Modesto, uh, right? I mean, we're as close to the tracks as you can be. So it is not a day that goes by that I'm not dealing with both sides of that equation. And, you know, I can say this, that I really love seeking advice from our city staff and our leaders in our community of how to bring both sides of that together and learn how to engage, listen to the needs. And, and really, I, I appreciate what Chris just said. You know, listen, find out what the needs are, and then find out how we can fill those gaps together. And I think Modesto has done an amazing job at creating nonprofits that, that can fill those gaps and that can fill those gaps and um, to come alongside government, even where government can't fill those gaps. And so it's exciting to bring everybody together and really unleash the potential of what can happen. Very good. Janice, how do you represent a district, a district that's so diverse? I live right in the middle of it. So, and I've already been meeting for months with various groups throughout the district in all of the various sectors. They have very similar needs. You'd be surprised. Homelessness, the crime that is resulting from the lack of policing, both homeless and other crimes. Traffic. We all have to drive the roads. Our district is so central. We have roadblocks everywhere we go. So it's really easy, whether you're rich or poor, to have the same needs, the same fears. And it's really easy for someone to focus on how it is that we can change that. Thank you very much. Brian? Uh, this first question, uh, or this question will go to Janice first. Um, this is a 30 second uh, answer, please. <sighs> uh, please share your thoughts on the College Avenue Road Diet. I hate the College Avenue Road Diet. Everyone does. And there's a reason why Tully Road is so impacted because it doesn't make any sense. It's confusing, and there's so much coming at you when you try to drive down college. I'm not quite sure what they were accomplishing or what they meant by doing it other than they got a grant. Just ask anyone who lives there and you've got a couple right here. Chris? Yeah, I agree with Janice. Um, we did it because we got a grant um, and so we got to repave that area and, you know, re we had to redo it so that people could ride bikes on it. No one uses it for bikes. They use the Virginia Trail, which is a fantastic thing. We should change it back to the way it was so people can drive down there and fix the traffic issues in our district. Jim. Yeah, I, I'm really thankful for our city staff and the intentions that they had of making it a safe place to drive down, um, making it a slower place to drive down. And, you know, it's interesting how our city has evolved over the years. And, you know, really, we don't need two big wide roads, College and Tully. And so I'm, I'm glad for the experiment that we have there and the things that we can learn from it. And I think sometimes we win, sometimes we learn. And, uh, and I think we can use that learning in other places as well. Maria, let's make this next question 30 seconds, okay? Okay. Um, so moving on to another part of Modesto. Uh, we'll start with uh, Chris first. What should be done about Wood Colony, much of which is just to the west of District 3? 30 seconds. Wood Colony, I don't have a strong opinion on it. I think that there's good arguments on both sides. Um, I think that it would be a good opportunity to, be a, to put affordable housing there potentially. 
but I'd want to hear more from the residents and more from like what the plan is to do with it before I made a strong decision on it. Cause it's really a contentious, awful issue. And I just don't know that we're as a community ready to make a decision on it. There's no reason why we have to make a decision on this right now. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I agree with Chris on this. And in fact, you know, it's, this is not really a city council issue. Um, Currently, it's been pushed over to LAFCO and uh, to the Board of Zoning. But, you know, the thing that I've done is just gone and started meeting with people out of Wood Colony and uh, just asking questions because I'm really out of the loop. I don't understand what's going on up there. I don't understand the heritage and the history. And I've had amazing conversations with men like Jake Wagner, uh, with Gordon Heinrich, with Luke Peters, um, just people who live in that community and have given me helpful perspective. And I really appreciate that. Okay, and Janice? I really appreciate Jim going into the Wood Colony community, which is outside the borders of the city of Modesto. But what I've been doing is talking to the residents of Woodland West, which are directly connected. And as far as Wood Colony is concerned, there's plenty of time as Chris points out, because a decision was bypassed and pushed off by the current Modesto City Council, there probably is something that could happen there. There probably is a way to negotiate how everybody can have what they want in the 13,000 acres and what the 1,500 acres want near the freeway. That's quite possible. But what Woodland West wants is a wall along 132 to keep the dust and the traffic down, which they're not getting. And what Woodland West wants is some parks, which the county never provided when they allowed the development of the neighborhood in the first place. Okay, thank you. All right, candidates, please characterize the culture of the current Modesto City Council and describe how you would affect it if you are elected. One minute each. We'll start with Jim. Yeah, so, um, boy, there's been a lot of criticism about the existing city council, but I just got to say this. I'm super thankful for anybody who would lay down their life and their family and be willing to serve Modesto, and especially in this current community of COVID. Uh, it has been a debacle for all of us who are leading in any sort of capacity and so sometimes it's, you know, you make a decision on Monday and uh, by Thursday, everything has changed or even by Tuesday, everything has changed. And so I realize the frustrations um, in city council and, I'm, and I am looking forward to helping to build a team-like atmosphere in trying to um, alleviate some of those issues. But I, I just wanna say thanks to our existing city council for the work that they have done. Um, it has not been an easy season for anybody. Thank you, Janice. Mm. Okay. Um, I've been involved with difficult councils. I've had a difficult mayor. But we managed to put policy over politics. God rest his soul. Carmen Sabatino was not the most agreeable person. But the rest of the council figured out how we could get things done, with him or without him. And oftentimes it was with him. I watch the meetings with dismay because it's all politics over policy. And everybody wants to be mayor and spends their time undermining the current mayor. It allows for nothing to get done it's embarrassing, and it's one of the main reasons that I got so mad that I'm coming back, because if I could do it with what I dealt with 12 years ago, anybody can. Thank you. Chris? I mean, I think it's the whole, the characterization of the council is just like dysfunctional, I think is not 100% accurate. I mean, I think I, they're doing the best they can. I kind of agree with Jim. It's like, these are people that are doing trying to make the best decisions for this community that they can. And what I'm going to do is just um, try to put forward policies that I think are good for the community, um, work with 
people that are have their policies and try to make their stuff happen. Um, work with the, the bureaucracy and, and I've met with a bunch of the guys already. Like I had a good meeting with um, Jalen French and with, I met with the IT guy, Charles, and uh, I met with Lori Smith and like, we've talked about my ideas of which ones maybe can work and which ones can't. And like, these are good humans. And I think that um, all in all, like if you know the council members, like they're all pretty good people. So I, I just feel like they've really been kind of beat up and, some of it may be rightfully so, but if you look at it universally, I think that, I think we're being a little unfair to these people. Very good, thank you. All right, uh, you know that uh, race relations and police uh, brutality, police reform um, have all been uh, top of mind and in the news lately. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, some community groups called for the establishment of an independent civilian review board for the Modesto uh, Police Department. We're wondering if you think this is a good idea. We'll start with you, Ms. Keating. I believe the independent police review board came up somewhere in the 2000s when there was a tragic shooting of a 12 year old boy in the area along the freeway past the car dealership there, Heritage. Um, I don't know enough about it, but um, I don't know that you, me, or anyone else who is not trained as a law enforcement officer to deal with difficult situations that are high with tension and all the other things that have to go into that split session, second decision can really sit in judgment of what happens to them. That's what the district attorney is for. That's what the internal affairs office is for. And I don't know that meddling in those affairs is necessarily the right path, but someone would have to do a lot better job at explaining what exactly they want to be done and what is a police review board. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ricky. I think that we should have a police review board. Um, I think one of the weaknesses of our um, current police department is that it, it doesn't do a good job of reaching out to the parts of the community that maybe have issues with the police. Um, they do a lot of reaching. I, I, think they, I think they could do that more effectively. Um, and I think that we just need to look at policing overall and we need to try to make our police department a more diverse place. Um, we need to we need to look at how the police department's organized and try to find ways to solve some of the issues. Like my car has been broken into 10 times in the last two years. My car got hit and run the other day, you know, and this is just at my house, my family getting affected by this stuff. And the police have never been, I, I had my checkbook stolen out of my car one of those times and $8,000 in checks written. I never had a police, never had any investigation or anything like that. We've got to try to find ways um, to reorganize the department so that we can um, actually effectively deal with crime. Thank you, Mr. Applegate. Yeah, so I would love to ask the chief what he thinks about a oversight committee. Um, I have actually really appreciated what Chief Galen Carroll is doing in our city. Uh, one of the things I know that he's doing for sure is he has a clergy council, so a group of pastors that meet with him, and these are from all different walks of life, both the wealthy churches, the um, more poverty-driven churches all across, and he has invited all of those to be in, engaged in conversations together so that when things do happen in our community, he's not alone in responding to it. And that's what I mean by having different sectors involved, um, because obviously the police are going to be limited by budget, they're going to be limited by their um, resources, but man, if we as citizens can get involved and help, I think there is a tremendous uh, thing that we can do together, even just getting the neighborhoods involved. And so I'd love to hear what the chief has to say about this, because I think he's an absolute gift to our city and, uh, and the way that he's been able to lead. So thankful for him. This next question is a one minute uh, answer. And we'll start with Chris. Uh, Chris, should Modesto do more to enforce COVID safety rules? I think it should for sure. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why Modesto has such a bad situation with COVID is because we've 
haven't effectively you know, done what the scientists asked us to do. And unfortunately, because we aren't, you know, enforcing rules or in, just encouraging people to follow rules or wear masks around or just telling people to do the right thing, um, COVID is going to affect our community much more um, intensely than it would otherwise. So I think that there's, we can't pretend that COVID doesn't exist. It's a thing. It's going to be with us for a while. And we just have to um, do what we need to do to what the scientists, what the epidemiologists tell us to do. And, uh, and we'll get through this together and then we'll come out on the other side. And we're going to do some really great things. Thanks. Jim, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm really thankful for how our city government has reached out to different places and uh, talked about this issue. Um, Deb Thrasher has become a good friend to me in this because I can ask her questions and she can help us. I've been really thankful to see people wear masks in grocery stores and in public places. Uh, you know, I, I've been thankful for our city's response. And I agree with Chris. I mean, we need to listen to the scientists. We need to listen to Dr. V and, uh, you know, find out uh, ways that we can help in our community. But I, I've been really thankful for how people have been respectful to one another and really um, tried to take care of each other well and, and just respect each other in this, in this time. And it's hard. I mean, it, you know, for all of us, it's like we can find an article on do this and then another article on do that. And it seems like the, the data changes pretty quickly. Um, but I'm really thankful for the patience that our community has shown and the way that we've responded together, even in um, going back to school, which has been tremendously hard on our teachers and our kids and our parents. And yet I, I think we've done pretty well as a community together in a really hard season. Thanks. Janice, what do you think? I wonder how people whose power was out in 109 degree heat in hazardous breathing and environmental conditions felt about COVID. While they were dying on the street and unable to cool off, why we didn't have cooling centers. I don't think anyone disagrees that COVID is not a big deal, but I think it's six going on seven months of destroying our economy shutting our businesses and preventing us from living our lives, our children going to school. We need, we need businesses to open up. We need to learn how to use common sense, wash your hands, use precautions. I don't think a bunch of bureaucrats running around and fining people so that they can put food on the table of their family is the right way to go. If anything, the city of Modesto should be helpful in how to help these people survive and how they can keep their businesses open. Enough is enough. Thank you. Okay, this is a quick question, um, 30 seconds or less, and we'll start with Jen. What is your personal approach to wearing a mask in public? Uh, I try to wear a mask everywhere I go and try to be as respectful to the people around me as possible. So if people want to wear a mask, I try to oblige and wear a mask with them. Um, I think our duty is to really take care of one another in this. Okay. And same question, Janice. Unlike our governor, I like to follow the CDC guidelines. So I don't wear a mask outside because I know whatever particles may exist are gone. I respect that stores felt pressured to mandate to avoid lawsuits that people wear masks. I have no problem with that. I'm not gonna melt down at the door of Safeway because that's a requirement. So what I do hope is that we get over this, we move on, and we start to look at how we protect our vulnerable, how we actually address the problem instead of imposing it on everyone who is not gonna die or get sick. Okay, and same question, Chris. I mean, I wear a mask when I leave my house. Um, I just do it because I think it's respectful to other people. And, um, you know, I do it because I wanna protect my family. I've got. 
um, elderly parents. I've got elderly in-laws, and I just think it's the right decision uh, for me and my family to wear a mask, you know, anytime that I can. Thank you very much. This next question is about jobs. What do, what's your strategy for bringing some more jobs to Modesto? Janice. Wow. Um, I think someone proposed a possibility for some jobs in 1,500 acres that was universally dumped on both by the newspaper and the surrounding neighbors. So my idea is the only thing that I have left, the federal government reduced the tax rate for corporations from 35 to 21. If there is a way for us to encourage them to take that difference and to invest into the community and to invest in jobs and training, then that's what I'm gonna do because that's all we have left. There are no land uses that we can bring employers to. Thank you, Chris. Jobs. Jobs. Love jobs. Um, well, economic development is one of my, you know, main things that I want to try to do. We know with COVID, um, you know, we're going to lose 30 to 60% of our local businesses. It's a pretty serious thing. Um, you know, Modesto may never be the same. So what we need to do is, um, as a city, we need to create program programs to help local businesses build capital. Um, I think we should allow people to use city facilities, parks, uh, you know, 10th Street Place, that kind of stuff, um, to run businesses. Give them a grant for six months. You can run your business here rent-free. City will pay your rent. City will pay your uh, electricity. Let you run your business for six months. Build your capital back up, and then you can launch back into the community. Um, it's, we know that the city of Modesto isn't going to have a lot of money. We know that because we're going to lose a lot because the tax revenue is going to be down. But these are things we can do that aren't going to cost money that help people huge. If you've been in business like me or Jim, you know, like um, building capital is critical. So that's what I do. Thank you. All right, Jim, jobs. Yeah, I, I'm super thankful for people in our area like uh, Steve Mort of Don's Mobile Glass, who actually found a corner, I don't know, acre, or probably it's probably five or six acres on the corner of coffee and scenic and put his business there. I would love to spend time with guys like him uh, and find out how to create jobs in our district. Uh, that, that would be one of them, just finding these vacant places and saying, how can we create more of this? And then the second thing, I'm so excited about Ace Train coming into downtown Modesto because I think that's going to transform jobs. And I love what um, Domo is doing with Josh Bridegroom. Uh, with Lynn Dickerson. I love the work that they are doing to actually entice and bring uh, work into our area. And I think Ace Train is going to transform that. So I think we have some fantastic opportunities. Um, you know, like I, I've heard a lot of people say, instead of building out, build up. And I think in downtown Modesto, we have the ability to be able to do that. This next question, uh, one minute answer. Um, Please share your ideas uh, for helping disadvantaged areas. And we'll start with Chris. Disadvantaged areas. I mean, I think there's a couple things like we've got these disadvantaged areas that people really kind of disparage and don't look at well. I mean, but really they're absolutely incredible areas that have lots of um, diverse accommodations that are fantastic and really great. And I think we need to do a better job of marketing these areas talking about them, educating people about what there is to do there, what there is to see there. And um, we'll see like, you know, more traffic and more commerce going on in those areas if all the parts of town go in there. Um, I also think affordable housing is another thing that would really help those areas, um, building up affordable housing so that, um, so we have new builds and, you know, nicer, uh, nicer construction going on in those areas. That'll help quite a bit. Um, I also think like I want one of the things I want to do is open a civic bank where so that a lot of our a lot of our um, people don't have bank accounts. So they're going into banks they are going to pay huge check fees and stuff like that. I want to try to create a civic bank where we can reduce those fees. Uh, so it's easier for people to, you know, afford to live. Thank you, Jim. What do you think? Oh. 
people yeah. like City Ministry Network, like Valley First Credit Union, who are already thinking about um, changing uh, the banking in those areas and helping people grow. And, uh, you know, honestly, um, from not getting ripped off by these check cashing places um, that are dangerous to those areas. Um, so I, and then I also want to seek advice from the current city staff and the leaders in our community. This is not a new issue. And for some reason, past city councils have not been able to deal with these pockets like the Swiss cheese in Modesto that just continues to allow these county pockets to hang out. And so I want to learn why we haven't had any um, ability to change that. And then I want to go to other cities outside of Modesto who have actually been able to do that and find out how they've done it and learn and grow from them and maybe take on some of their ways. I think that could be very helpful to us. Thank you. Janice? Well, let me see if I can help Jim a little bit about his confusion on why the Swiss cheese of the county islands perhaps have not come into the city of Modesto. Frankly, Stanislaus County has allowed development that's inappropriate, does not have proper services, including sewer and sidewalks, and they expect the city of Modesto to absorb those islands without recognizing that the burden to the taxpayer that already pays the bills would be placed on all the rest of us to bring those upgrades. So when I was on Stancog and when I was on the city council, we went at that island problem hard. We brought up many neighborhoods, Shackleford, um, you name it. There's at least six that we brought into the city of Minnesota, but we did it because we made Stanislaus County do the right thing and bring those disparaged neighborhoods, those impoverished neighborhoods, those under underdeveloped neighborhoods up to city standards. And guess what? Now they are. All right, these next couple of questions, we're gonna ask for rapid responses. We only need a couple of seconds each uh, for them. They're, they're quick. Well, Janice, who do you support in the race for Congressional District 10? I'm voting for Ted House. However, I will point out that no matter who gets elected, I had a very productive relationship with Dennis Cardozo when he was our congressman. And he brought a lot of benefit and we worked very well together. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm a Republican and I'm voting for the Republican. Very good, Mr. Ricky. I'm voting for Josh Harder. He's the hardest working uh, Congress congressman we've ever had. Very good, Mr. Applegate. Yeah, I agree with Chris. Um, Josh has reached out several times and just made personal phone calls to me. I can't believe how hard that guy works for our area. All right. And who do you support in the race for Modesto mayor? Jim. Yeah, that's a great question. There's so many great candidates out there, and I think we're super fortunate to have so many. And I am undecided at this point, but I'm so thankful for the amount of um, good candidates that we have for mayor. Janice? I'm supporting the current mayor, Ted Bramvold. Thank you, and Chris? I'm undecided at this point. I think we've got some really great candidates out there. Um, yeah, really amazing candidates. It's a good thing, positive, very positive. Okay, this question will start with Jim. As a private resident, what do you feel is your single most important contribution to the Modesto community. Brian, I didn't catch the first part of that question. Would you mind repeating it? As a private resident, what do you feel is your single most important contribution to the Modesto community? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I feel like my most important contribution is the fact that I have mentored and discipled people in our community. When I was in business, we put several other people in business. Um, as a pastor, we have put uh, many people into leadership positions in our community. And so I feel like my single best contribution is that I can just take who I am and help develop others and make their personalities, their gifts, their skills shine in our community. And I've loved watching that. I love people be successful. Janice? I was a private citizen who spearheaded the creation of the Salvation Army of Bavarian Homeless Shelter. As a private citizen, 
got the building donated to the Salvation Army, which brought in millions of dollars of state grant money to improve that facility. So that's got to kind of go up there on the top. And Chris? Um, I mean, I've been, as a private citizen, I've been just bringing people together here at Modesto for the last 20 years. Um, whether it's been events or working with nonprofits like Boys and Girls Club and Stanislaus Education Foundation, um, I've just I've done a ton of work here in the community. Thank you. Okay, this next question will be pretty uh, quick question, 30 seconds or less. Name something positive about outgoing Councilwoman Christy Ayu, plus something that you think she may have done better. We'll start with you, Ms. Keating. I'm not going to criticize Christy Ayu, Councilmember Ayu, because frankly, it's amazing that she has the high stress job that she does, and she showed up, and she did her work, and she participated fully in all the meetings. So. I appreciate her. I spoke with her often on different issues when she needed advice. And um, I wish her well in the mayor's race, but I don't think there's any reason to criticize anybody at this point in time. Okay, same question. Uh, Chris? Uh, I feel like something that uh, Christy did that was amazing was how she helped the, uh, the dispensary in our district. Um, when they had problems with the police department. I think that was a really a good thing that a council person did, was able to kind of mediate an issue between a city department and a business owner. And so I think that's fantastic and hats off to her. I think she did a great job there. I also agree with Janice. I don't see any reason to criticize Christy. She works her tail off. Um, she's a good human being. Uh, you know, she's not perfect, but you know, none of us are. Okay, same question, Jim. Yeah, I agree. Christy is one of the most loving, uh, hardworking people that I've ever met. And if you called her or text her tonight, she would get back to you right away. And she has done that faithfully to people in our community. And there's often times that I've talked to her that I felt like she has actually responded to things that she didn't even need to respond to, or she just went over the top to respond. And so. I think our hearts as Modesto citizens can say, thank you, Christy, for the work that you've done and for the example that you set to us in that. This next question, we'll start with Chris. Name something you appreciate about each of your opponents. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Jim, I, I really appreciate uh, the fact that like, I was taking some pictures in front of your house and just said hello, and we just sat and talked for 45 minutes and introduced our families to each other and um, that was just really kind and super appreciate that and love the work you do in Modesto. You're a fabulous human being, man. And uh, I'm proud to run against you. And Janice, um, hats off to you for all the work you've done with the, with the homeless. It's fantastic. Um, the community's a better place because of what you did. Janice? I've never met or had an encounter with Jim, but I'm told by many people I know that you are a very nice man. So good for you on that. At least they're not telling me the opposite. And Chris, I enjoy your venues you host. And I really enjoyed being part of the first X Fest and the resulting community sort of reactions sitting on the dais. So you brought a little something that we never had here before and refined it as you went along and um, uh, we're, we're, we're all that much better for it because now downtown knows how to handle these kinds of events. Jim? Yeah, um, Janice, I really appreciate the fact that you've served our community for over 20 years and you've been faithful in our community and you haven't left. I know it has not always been easy and yet you've been faithful to serve. And so I really appreciate that about you. Chris, I am thankful for your ideas. Man, when we sat on the curb and talked, you were just spitballing ideas one after the other. And I think that is what our community needs. And, you know, for your list of 100 ideas, maybe 
50 of them won't work or even 90 of them won't work, but we need those kind of ideas in our town. And I am so thankful um, to be friends with a person who is just spitballing ideas like crazy and has such an optimistic attitude about those things. And not only just your ideas, but ideas that you've gone to other cities, other places around the U.S. and seen what's been done well and then brought them back here. And so I'm super thankful for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know both of you better uh, through this process and then even after the process is over. All right. It's good to see that uh, all of you came up with something and rather quickly. <laughs> um, it's time now for closing statements. Uh, you'll get one minute each and then we'll wrap this up. Janice, we'll start with you. Okay, I want to close by saying that I sincerely believe that Modesto has a public safety problem and we need more police officers, not less. We need to redirect funding to the police department, not attempt to defund the department. The crime and lawlessness in Modesto, particularly in our district and certain areas of Modesto, it really requires the visible presence of police officers. We need to get for once to proactive policing in the car, driving through the neighborhood, making their, their presence known. It works, it helps. I hear crime statistics are down, but that's not what I hear from the people who live in the district. They're horrified by it, they're scared by it. They're, they're being victimized with petty crimes, just like Chris's experience with his car getting broken into. Homelessness is a major issue, and it's and it, and, and major law enforcement action needs to occur, one way or the other. Thank you, Janice. Chris, your closing statement. Uh, first of all, thanks, guys, for having me. Um, Janice, Jim, it was awesome spending a little time with you guys. I wish we could have seen each other in person, but I know me too. <laughs> Modesto needs, uh, Modesto needs some leaders that um, have a vision to bring Modesto back to life. And to me, city government's job is to kind of provide a roadmap to unlock our city's um, course to the future. So I just want to try to chart a course um, by working together to increase economic development, to promote culture, um, and just concentrate on making Modesto a fun place to live. Um, and so I think we need to go with the tide a little bit. Let's make changes now to kind of take advantage of the post-COVID economy. And let's make it easier for people to work at home. And let's give people a reason to stay in Modesto. And let's make it more affordable to live here. So if I'm elected, that's what I'm going to try to do. Make sure to check out my 100 ideas for Modesto um, at christrickyforcouncil.com. And again, thanks so much for having me out. Thank you, Chris. Jim, your closing statement. Yeah, so I want to say thanks to, to MSOB, to uh, Janice and Chris for being a part of this. And, you know, really I want to say thanks to the heroes in our community, the people like Twin Heart Hill, Brad Hahn, Teresa Gamboa, um, who head up our neighborhoods. I mean, they're amazing people that are making things happen in our city. So I'm thankful for them. Um, I just want to remind us the government can't do it all, and we need to unleash the potential in Modesto by getting all of the sectors involved. And I think that's what I can bring to the table is helping to bring better networks of people to be engaged. And listen, we need all the support we can in this race. We can't do it alone. So we need people to give money, uh, to donate time. So if you'd like to support me in that, you can go to my website. It's applegateformodesto.com. And you can book time with me on that uh, website. You can order a yard sign and you can support through a donation. So if you'd like to do that, that would be fantastic. And by the way, I'll be out at the farmer's market on Saturday. If you'd like to come meet me in person, I'd love to spend time with you. Thank you. Thank you all candidates. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, participating in this uh, forum tonight. Uh, we find that uh, uh, people appreciate uh, getting to know you a little bit and sometimes it's their only way to see you face to face uh, during this campaign season. Uh, viewers, be sure to tune in for more debates here at modby.com throughout September and up until the November 3rd election. One candidate forum for another Modesto City Council race was held yesterday, and the other one will come next week. Also next week, we'll interview candidates for a Modesto Irrigation District seat. 
And last week we talked with people running for state senate and for two Stanislaw County Board of Supervisor seats. And all can be viewed at mobby.com. Thank you and good evening.